Hey, what's up everyone? We're gonna do grade six, unit one today. The first word we're gonna do is region. Examples of two-dimensional regions include the interior of a circle or the interior of a polygon. So here we've got a couple circles and we wanna know what the interior of that circle is. That's gonna be the inside, shaded in, in pink here. You know, it's just the region, that circle, the line itself is just the, the boundary point. The region is that space inside in the interior. Circle, polygon, it doesn't matter. We're just looking at that space on the inside that's contained inside. And when you have a two-dimensional shape like a polygon or circle, then we can measure that interior of that shape using something called area. And the area is just going to be the measure of that two-dimensional region. All right, the next word, area. The area of a two-dimensional region measured in square units is the number of square units that cover the region without gaps or overlaps. So the side length of each of these squares in this polygon coming up is just one centimeter, all right? So this polygon looks like that. Once again, we're gonna look at the region of the, the inside. We can measure that with area. And if you can count how many square centimeters there are, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's going to be eight square centimeters in that region. Here we've got another square, another shape. It's a, it's a small triangle. And if you could see, that's half a square unit. Um, so we're actually going to have a fractional amount, oh, half a square centimeter. The next word is rearrange. When we decompose a figure into pieces and put them back together in a different way, we are rearranging the pieces. Like when you rearrange your room. Here's an example of a triangle that has been decomposed and rearranged into two squares. So we're gonna start with this triangle, we're gonna cut it up, and then we're gonna take those pieces and we're gonna take them and rearrange them into two different squares. So that's one, two, so those two parts of the triangle turn into square and the, the middle part turned into a square also. Compose, decompose. Compose means put together and decompose means take apart. We use the words composed to describe putting several geometric figures together to make a new figure. Here we have a circle and we are we have a we have a square this shape this pill shape is composed of a square and two half circles okay and when we take this same figure and decompose it now we have those pieces parallelogram a parallelogram is a four-sided polygon with two pairs of parallel sides. The opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. As a result of that, the opposite sides of a parallelogram have equal length. The opposite angles of a parallelogram have equal measure. So we have our parallelogram here. We have, notice these lengths are equal measure and we have a and a the same size b and b also the same size the opposite angles so these two in orange are going to be the same and these two in green will also be the same base height of a parallelogram these two words go together any of the four sides of a parallelogram can be chosen as a base the term base can also refer to the length of this side. Once we have chosen a base, then a perpendicular segment from a point on the base of the parallelogram to the opposite side will always have the same length, and we will call this value the height. There are infinitely many line segments that can represent the height. All right, so let's create our parallelogram again. And we've got our four sides there, four angles. Let's go ahead and duplicate this because we're gonna have two examples here. So any of these four sides that are being highlighted right now can be considered the base. 
we're just gonna pick and we're gonna pick uh, this side for the second one this base one label this base two so these are two different parallelograms so now we've chosen the base we just need a perpendicular segment from the point on the base of the parallelogram to the opposite side so let's review what a, par a perpendicular line is here. A perpendicular means 90 degrees, a 90 degree angle from another line, so it makes a right angle. So that's what we need. We need a perpendicular line. We need another line that's perpendicular to this one, one that makes a right angle. So there we have it. All right, so this line here is perpendicular. Look at that right angle, 90 degrees from that base to the opposite side. And notice how the height doesn't change no matter where I move it. Even if we extend out the lines of the parallelogram here, that height is still going to be exactly the same. So that's our height, 90 degrees from that base. All right, in this second parallelogram, let's pick a different base, the one that's kind of on its side over there. We're going to extend those bases out. And if you notice, this height is going to extend to the opposite side. It's not even going to hit the other side. It's like in that dotted line area. But we do need a right angle from the base. We need to create a perpendicular um, line from the base to the opposite side. And there's infinitely many line segments, so check this out. I mean, tons and tons and tons. We can go on forever. All right, next up, opposite vertex. When you choose a side to be the base in a triangle, the vertex that is not an endpoint of the base is the opposite vertex. So here we have a triangle. Let's label it A, B, and C. And then let's pick a side to be the base. So if we pick uh, B and C to be the base, you'll notice that point A is the opposite vertex or the opposite point, the one that we're not using in the triangle. There's three points. Two of them will need to be touching the base. The other one is the opposite vertex and we need to understand the opposite vertex because that is what helps us determine the height of a triangle. So AC is the base and B is the opposite vertex. And finally BA, when AB is the base, C will be the opposite vertex.